I've totally got your number. It's 500, as in 500 internal server error, isn't it? What does that mean, and how do you deal with it? We can help. The experts at Brightbox Solutions created Help Desk Premier and really know their stuff on technical issues. Trust me, the next few minutes will give you the answers you need. I'll wait. See you in a few minutes. Almost everyone has encountered an HTTP 500 internal server error as they browse the web. 500 internal server errors have several names. You may see the page report an HTTP 500 internal server error, an HTTP 500 error, or a HTTP error 500. Developers and website administrators may see a 500 internal server error when managing their own server. So what is a 500 internal server error? In short, an HTTP 500 error means that there's a problem with the configuration of the server. An HTTP 500 error is not a problem the end user can solve themselves. In their case, they must report the problem to the server administrator or site owner. But if you're managing your own IIS server and it's your job to diagnose 500 server errors, there are several ways to make the process easier. When you receive an HTTP 500 error report, you probably won't be given much indication as to where the problem lies. The text that accompanies an HTTP 500 error is deliberately very vague by default. This is a security measure which avoids exposing technical information to end users. However, this can be changed to help you diagnose the problem. In IIS, it's possible to change error reports to provide more information on the error. This feature is best used with caution and is most suitable for development servers which are not exposed to a broad audience. Find the site in IIS Manager and click on it. Then double click on the ASP section which is under IIS. Open the Debugging Properties node and change the value of Send Errors to Browser to True. Click Apply in the upper right. Now click again on the website. In this case, we're using default website as an example, and double-click Error Pages. When this dialog opens, you'll see various IIS errors. Right-click on the 500 error and choose Edit Feature Settings. In the Edit Error Pages Settings window, select the Detailed Errors radio button and click OK. Now, when you run your application and receive the 500 internal server error, you'll receive more detail about the error. If you encounter HTTP error 500 while running a .NET application, the Windows Event Viewer can help you trace 500 internal server errors and determine a pattern. If the server logs are not clear, gather information from the user and find out what they were trying to do when the error occurred. There are other things you can try to resolve a 500 internal server error. If you're using the .NET framework, a corrupt install can cause 500 internal server error messages. Reinstall the .NET framework and see if this solves the problem. The web.config file is a crucial component within .NET. If it's missing or corrupt, or if the permissions on the file have changed, this could cause HTTP 500 errors. Check the permissions in the first instance. Back up your data and reinstall your application if it's practical to do so. Skype can conflict with IIS web applications if you don't have your Skype options set correctly. Within Skype, go to Tools, Options, Advanced, Connections, and uncheck Use Port 80 and 443 as alternatives for incoming connections. If your HTTP 500 error is suffixed by a period and another number, such as 500.13, the problem should be fairly easy to track down. Explanations can be found at this link. See? Awesome! Next technical problem you have? Save time and headaches. Check out our solutions first here. And share us with your friends.